Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Good morning. Today, so I'll actually is about quantum gates. So before that, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Maya Gobal, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, School of Computing, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Today's topic, the outline is the quantum computing and quantum computation, quantum gates and quantum circuits, and classical bits versus this quantum bits, categories of quantum gates, Pauli gates and Hadamard gate. So first, what is quantum computing? The quantum computing is an emerging field or it's a rapid growing field or it's a booming field that follows the basics of quantum mechanics which is solve some complicated problems. For example, if you want to uh, diagnose some hereditary diseases, then it's very difficult to find the DNA structure or the molecule structure of that the particular human being and based on that only really we can analyze or we can diagnose the hereditary diseases. So these kind of problems in order to solve by using this the classical computers, so it is a very tedious job as well as it take more computational time. This thing is avoided with the help of this quantum computation. The quantum computation it will compute the complicated problems or very complex problems with very less amount of time and with good computational speed. And then the quantum computation. So what all the basic elements which is needed for this uh, quantum computation is three things. That is a register or a set of registers which is used to store the quantum information. It's nothing but to store the quantum bits and an unitary matrix which is tailored to execute the given quantum algorithms to solve the given problem. And when you are solving a particular problem, we will get some outcome. That outcome is measured by using some measurements. The next is quantum gates. So in my previous slide, what I told is, so we need the registers. So the register is the combination or it's composed with number of flip-flops. And these flip-flops are composed with quantum circuits and the quantum circuits are composed with quantum gates. So the quantum gates are the basic building blocks which are used to construct the quantum circuits. And these quantum gates, it will manipulate the quantum states of qubits. That is how to store the data and what is the nature, all those things is manipulated with the help of these quantum gates. And the quantum gates is a mathematical operation that acts on the states of this one or more qubits and that can be represented with matrices. And the next is this quantum circuits. So the quantum circuit, it is nothing but it is composed with number of quantum gates and these quantum gates are used to perform some quantum algorithms. And with the help of this the quantum algorithm, we can solve some complex problems. So the quantum gates quantum circuits is a series of quantum gates that acts on this quantum states and the quantum gates are arranged in some order or some specific manner in order to find to solve certain problems. And quantum circuits which are similar to this classical circuits but they are operate on quantum states rather than classical bits. So the classical bits that will operate in classical uh, circuits and the quantum bits that operates on quantum circuits. What is the classical bit versus this the quantum bit? So the system normally we are using in our classical system, the classical gates by using AND, OR and this the NOT gate, the bits are manipulated, that bits are this classical bits and the classical computers are made up of with all the bits which holds this uh, zeros and ones and bits are used to represent in classical computers and the informations are stored in this the zeros and ones via these bits. And for example, so if you are giving 
a 64 bit to represent a number. So, if you want to represent n numbers, we need n times of this 64 bits. And because of this reason, the bits are very slow. So, the computational speed is very slow. So, when you are completing a complicated problems, so it will take more time. Its circuits behavior is based on some classical physics. The next is this the quantum bits. The same way, so here the logical gates and or not are used to manipulate the classical bits. The quantum logical gates are used to manipulate the qubits. So, the quantum bits are nothing but the qubits. It can hold the values or it can hold the states that is 0 or 1 as well as the combination or the logical combination of this 0 and 1. That nature is called as this the superposition. So, the qubit it so hold both 0 as 1 as well as the superposition state. And the qubits or the quantum bits are used in quantum computers and the informations are stored in the quantum computers with the help of these qubits and it can be labeled with ket that is 0 ket and 1 ket and its superposition nature the superposition state is represented with a 0 ket 0 plus b ket 1. So, here the A and B are the complex numbers and when you are considering this number as a vector, qubit as vector, then when you are adding these two vectors, we will get the superposition state of the quantum state. Here for example, so normally the classical bit, the 64 bits are used to represent a number. Here we need for representing a single bit, we need 2 power n bits. For example, we have an two states that is 0 and 1 that is the superposition state we will get the combination of this zeros and 1s. So, for a single qubit we will have 0, 1 then the combination of this 0, 0 and 0, 1. So, for example, we have 3 qubits which is used to represent with the help of this 2 power 8 3 combinations that is we will get two, uh, 8 combinations of the 3 qubit number. Because of this reason the qubit is uh, the quantum computing is very fast and it will give the solution of some complex problems in very fast manner and it circuits behavior as based on this the quantum mechanics. So, the next the physical representation of classical bit versus this the quantum bit. So, in this the classical bit that is the state is either 0 or 1. So, 0 means it is negatively charged and 1 means it is positively charged either that is on or off. In the qubit it is labeled as that is 1 ket and 0 ket. So, here the 1 ket it will give some energy level and this the zero state or this the ground state, it will give some energy level. So, the difference between this uh, excited state and this the ground state is delta E. So, by this nature, there are number of quantum gates are available. So, it is majorly classified into two that is single qubit quantum gate and multiple qubit quantum gate. The single qubit quantum gate, it is works on the single qubit and it is represented by 2D unitary matrix and this is the multiple qubit quantum gate, it is works on more than 2 qubits and based on the number of qubits it is used, the dimensions is vary. So, today we will see about the basic single qubit quantum gate that is the Pauli X gates, Pauli Y gates, Pauli Z gates and hard mod gate and the multiple qubit gate that is a C naught gate, swap gate and control phase gate. So, to combining this single qubit gate and this the multiple qubit gate, the quantum circuits are constructed and that circuits are used to solve some complex problems with the help of some 
quantum algorithms. So, the first one is this the Pauli gate. So, the Pauli gate it is named uh, the scientist uh, that is uh, Wolfgang Pauli which has who has found the Pauli nature of the atom or the electrons. So, that nature is inherent from uh, the quantum mechanics to this the quantum computation and these three are the basic gates which is used to follow this Pauli exclusion principle or Pauli property. So, the first is this the Pauli X gate. So, the Pauli X gate the circuit diagram is represented by that is uh, X. So, here the Pauli X it is nothing but the symbol NOT gate. So, what the symbol NOT gate is done is, so when you are giving the input as 0, it will give the output as 1 and when you are giving the input as 1, it will get the output as 0. The same working principle is followed in the Pauli X gate. For example, when you are giving the input as X through this the Pauli X gate, you will get the output as ket 1 and the same way when you are giving the input as ket 1 through this the Pauli X gate, you will get the output as 0, ket 0. How it has represented in this the matrix is that is 0, 1, 1, 0 with this 0 qubit, you will get this the 1 qubit. And the representation of this uh, Pauli X gate with the help of this the block sphere representation. So, why uh, this the block sphere representation comes into a picture is, so normal and electron, so that can be its rotation or its spinning rotation is based on this three axis that is x axis, y axis and this z axis. In the Pauli X gate, the information or it that is it spins from the x axis from 0 to 1 as well as from 1 to 0. That is a Pauli y and Pauli z gate. The same the working principle of this Pauli x is followed in Pauli y and Pauli z gate, but it rotates in y axis as well as in this the z axis in pi radian. Okay. So, in this uh, circuit representation when you are passing a state ket 0 through this Pauli y, we will get i ket 1. The same way when you are passing the ket 1 through this uh, Pauli y circuit or Pauli y gate, we will get minus i 0. Okay. So, this is the matrix representation that is y into 0 ket 0 is equal to 0 i minus i 0 and this the one is represented with the column vector that is 1 0 which is equal to that is 0 i which is equal to i 1. The same principle is followed in Pauli z gate. Here the rotation the spin rotation is among this z axis. And one of the beauty of this the Pauli z gate is the Pauli z gate is otherwise called as phase shift gate. Okay. So, what it has to do is when you are giving the ket 0, it will not do any changes, but the phase is changed. Similarly, when you are giving 1 ket 1, so it will change minus 1. The same way the phase is also changed. So, that is why when you are giving plus the phase through this uh, Pauli gate, you will get the other phase minus the other phase. So, the next is the Hardmod gate. So, the quantum gates, the Hardmod gate play a major role or pivotal role. Why? Because is it creates the superposition states of the ground and the excited state. Okay. So, with the help of this hard mod gate, so we can represent the superposition states of this ket 0 and ket 1. So, what it has to do is, so in the Pauli x, Pauli y and Pauli z, so respective to its spinning, 
the Pauli x it will rotate in x axis and Pauli y it will rotate in y axis and Pauli z it will rotate in z axis in phi radian. But the Hardmod gate it will rotate around x axis by pi radian that is 180 degree then followed by clockwise rotation around the y axis by pi by 2 radian that is 90 degree. Okay. So, because of this nature, so it is very the all the superposition states are given together and it will find the probability of which is that combination. Okay. So, the Hadamard head takes the qubit from the basic states uh, that is the uh, ket 0 and ket 1 and it has put into it the equal position and it will take all the combinations. So, from that combination which is having the highest one that is taken as consideration. So, the Hadamard head is crucial tool and because of this superposition nature the quantum computing which enables the quantum computers to perform uh, complex calculations in a better way. So, it is a fundamental building block for many quantum algorithms and quantum circuits. So, even though the Pauli x, Pauli y and Pauli gates are the building blocks, the Hadamard gate will play a major role or pivotal role because of its, it represents this superposition state. So, here when you are giving this get 0 through this Hadamard, you will get the phase plus that is the upper direction and when you are giving 1 cat 1 through this hard mod gate you will get this the downstream. So, that is hard mod that 0. So, here is equal to 1 by root 2. Okay. So, what is this uh, root 2 is because we have only 2 bits that is uh, uh, 0 and 1 2 qubits. 2 qubits is represented with that is of the probability of these two combination is 1. Okay. So, here when you are taking this as that is 1 by 2 square, here this y also this 1 by 2 square, then this 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 you will get the probability as 1. So, when you are giving this hard mod with this qubit 0, uh, the cat 0 is equal to 1 by root 2, that cat 0 plus 1 by root 2 cat 1 which is equal to the positive uh, upstream and when you are giving this one you will get this the negative upstream the Hadamard gate and also one more uh, the feature of this the Hadamard gate is when you are applying the two Hadamard gates you will get the same state. So, here the cat 0 is given passed through two Hadamard gate you will get the same cat 0. Similarly, when you are passing cat 1 to Hadamard gate you will get the same one and also this h square is equal to h into h which is equal to h plus h dagger which is equal to the identity matrix. Because of this silent feature the Hadamard gate is excel a lot in quantum computing to construct the quantum circuit and these circuits are used in many quantum algorithms in order to solve the complex problems. So, I hope this video is uh, more helpful to the students to understand how the gating, what all the gating circuits are there and how it is works. Thank you.